What's going on, agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and today we received a small piece of what we have been waiting for in terms of upcoming changes for the Division 2, ranging in everything from open world to PvP. But before we get into all those changes, if you like my uploads, please take the time to smash that sub button and click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel for honest and intense Division content. And with that, let's dive right in. Now, it doesn't matter if you are new to The Division 2 or are a seasoned veteran that has been playing since launch day, I think we can all agree that this game, despite having a surprise DLC release and initial surge of interest, now it doesn't matter if you are new to The Division 2 or a seasoned veteran that has been playing since launch day, I think we can all agree that this game, despite having a surprise DLC release and initial surge of interest, has been struggling mightily ever since. It's the bugs balance issues, a game breaking damage stacking glitch, and the inability to fix an item without breaking three others that have really held back what the Division 2 could be. And hopefully with the incoming patch 8.4 fixes, they can start to get a firm grasp on all the issues this game is currently plagued by. First up in this initial batch of fixes are small fixes directed at handling minor issues in the gameplay loop, starting off with opening up the ongoing manhunt challenge to include normal difficulty. So that if you join someone else's open world on normal difficulty and your world is at a higher difficulty, you will still gain progress in their open world. Seasonal manhunt changes also include the installation of a reset mechanic, so players can take on the manhunt all over again without changing their open world difficulty, which I guess could be good for some players looking to tackle it all over again. God bless you. There are also small fixes centered around the coyote mask, including higher drop rates for this mask on higher difficulties and awarding players that have reached rank 35 and not received it as part of their seasonal awards. Reward qualities are being increased for lesser open world activities, such as public executions, blockades, and propaganda broadcast, which I actually target to farm in my open world and have long been disappointed with the horrible rewards for completing these tasks. And finally, for conflict PVPers, the reward caches at maximum level are now high in quality. Next up are the patch notes that are focused on balance changes. So let me start off this section by reading the wording directly from the dev team patch notes. The game was tuned in a way that playing the exact same enemy composition at higher difficulties and higher player counts would match to the expected gear of that difficulty and extra players added. However, since the game also adds more elites and veterans to accommodate higher difficulty and player counts, this caused tuning to overcompensate health and damage higher than intended. We are thus lowering many of these values. Now if you have played on the higher difficulty settings or like to play in full squads, then you have all experienced the bullet spongy NPCs that can blind fire you down the block, or how tanky they become when you have a full squad that exposes just how broken the squad scaling is right now with this game. So let's take a quick look at what they are doing about these issues with this patch. All NPCs damage outputs will be reduced on all difficulty levels. And this has been a huge issue on challenge difficulty on up, and we've all seen it, right? You know those tanky NPCs rushing straight at us, absorbing every bit of damage that we can inflict on them while they one or two tap us and our squad mates. I mean, it's been a huge issue plaguing the game, and hopefully this and this group of changes can lessen this inequality. This change to NPCs will be spread across all types of enemies and all activities. Enemy health and armor scaling will result in reduced values as compared to now on hard and challenging difficulty settings. Now, since group scaling will result in less tanky NPCs for heroic and legendary levels, NPC health and armor will be increased to compensate for the reduction to their values. So for these hardest difficulty missions, they are reducing NPC damage output and reducing the broken scaling values while buffing NPC health and armor to try and keep the difficulty high, but reduce the bullet sponginess due to that scaling issue. Next up are a host of changes aimed directly at heroic and legendary players. Let me read you what was said by the dev team about these specific changes. We still intend heroic and legendary to be very challenging. Therefore, we are increasing the base difficulty to account for the health reductions for co-op scaling. Compared to now, this means Heroic and Legendary will be a bit harder for solo players and two-player groups, 
three-player difficulty will stay roughly the same and four-player difficulty will be easier. Now with this portion of the changes were Black Tusk specific adjustments that went live earlier this week along with many reductions to health and damage of the Black Tusk doggos which included reducing the health of their control points. The rest of the specific Black Tusk changes were all aimed at their support stations and ranged from their health to healing speeds and the fact that they will now be affected by the EMP effects. There were also reductions made to level 30 and world tier 1 to 5 NPC health armor and damage values. You know, I guess to help out new players is to begin their agent progressions. Sadly, PvP didn't receive a lot of ink in this patch, but the changes look to be huge with a base 20% weapon damage reduction across the board for all weaponry, with rifles and MMRs receiving a further 10% reduction on top of that base 20% reduction. Now, I haven't been into the DZ since the damage glitch appeared, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts from those of you that still enter into the DZ. How's the weapon balance looking outside of the damage stackers? There were also two small changes to cluster seeker mines in PvP, but the large changes were in that nerfing of all DZ weaponry. Now to finish off this patch were some minor UI tweaks and reset issues with the manhunt, global directives, and some objectives not showing completed for progressions. What I can say is that I do not see anything to do with the damage stacking exploit or the new weapon talent stacking exploit that has now appeared. And I mentioned this in my opening about how when the dev team fixes one item, they seem to be able to break another. I still haven't seen any real fixes for the issues with the revive hive or with the wonky bullet registration issues. Now I can appreciate the world difficulty and NPC scaling fixes along with the specific Black Tusk changes as I played a minimum of challenge difficulty, but what we really need are the core mechanics properly sorted out and working, as without those, you can make all the small changes you want, but players are going to lose interest in the game and walk away permanently. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comment section below. How is Update 8.4 stacking up for you? Is it solving enough issues for you to continue to engage with the Division 2 on a daily basis? And don't forget, if you haven't yet done so, please take just a second and smash that sub button and don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up, if not with a thumbs down. If you feel like supporting me and my YouTube channel operations, look in the video description for links to my Patreon page and Buzz Boutique merchandise stores. Follow me on Twitter for all my posts concerning most things gaming related with a heavy emphasis on the Division franchise. And until my next upload, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.